Jennifer, are you a, were you hanging around my office this morning, or are you just a, a mind reading genius? I'll take a second. Mind reading genius sounds yes. good to me. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about follow up. Okay, follow up is critical. Follow up is vital in property management, in real estate, in multifamily. Sure, it happens. Every now and then you get somebody that, that either calls you and they're like, I gotta have a place right now. I need it, I need it, I need it. Send me over the lease agreement. Send me over the, the application, whatever I need to do, I want it, right? It happens. We one call close things. I think this, the few times that it does happen, it's not even really a one call close. It's just the first time they've talked to us but it's not the first time they've reached out to the community. Uh, very, very, I would say one in 10,000, right? You're gonna get somebody with absolutely no research. It's gonna be the first time they've ever talked to you. They're just gonna walk into the leasing office, cold off the street, and bingo, bango, boombo, lease an apartment from you, right? It, it does happen, but in most cases, there's some sort of research that's gone on in the background. There's some sort of contact that they've had with the community. And in most cases, when that research and contact has been with you, it requires you to do some follow-up. Yet, basically, very few property managers actually follow up. It's crazy. It's probably because they're not the ones that have to pay the marketing bills, right? There's a reason why CoStar gives away a Tesla, why Apartments.com gives away a Tesla every year at NAA, because they get all the money. They get a lot more money than I get to train you guys for advertising. Advertising is expensive. Getting leads is expensive. We need to follow up. All right, so in terms of follow up, there are three, count them, one, two, three different types of follow up that we've covered in the portal. Does anyone remember or want to just take a wild guess, try and hit another one out of the park, uh, what the three different types of follow up are when you are leasing an apartment. Three different types of follow-up that we talk about in the leasinguniversity.com portal. Phone follow-up. Phone follow-up. I like it, okay? But what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about follow-up in general. Now the phone is the vehicle for the follow-up. I love that. All of our follow-up pretty much you know, is going to be either phone or email. I don't think we're going to walk to somebody's, you know, place of employment and, hey, I'm here. I want to lease you an apartment. So, yeah, I like that with phone follow-up, but that's, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for in terms of, like, types of follow-up. Let me give you the three types of follow-up on our session today and grab a sword and a shield. Grab a notepad and a, and a piece of paper because not only am I going to explain the three different types of follow-up, I'm going to give you the verbiage, I'm going to give you the words that spark that type of follow-up, okay? Uh, the, first, the first type of follow-up is the, the most obvious, it's follow-up, right? I am following up on your tour, right? I am following up on the conversation that we had last week. You were at my property yesterday and I'm following up with you to see if you want to lease the apartment. The number one type of follow-up is follow-up. It's the most easy, all right? Number two type of follow-up is following through. Following through. And follow through is a tremendous opportunity that you guys most likely, and it's not your fault because we haven't reiterated this to you, which I'm doing it right now. I'm handing it to you. It will be your responsibility to follow through after this call. Follow through is a tremendous way to lease apartments. Who, who wants to tell me what follow through is? What is follow through? Doing what you said you're going to do. Exactly Send right. Send them the quote. Give them more information. Look into something that you talked to them about on the tour. Exactly right. And let me add something to doing what you said you were going to do. There's a critical piece to this that your competition is not taking advantage of. Okay, first of all, they're not even following through. Most of them aren't even doing what they said they were going to do, right? I'm waiting on a quote for somebody to paint my house. It's been three weeks now, right? They said they were going to get it to me by the end of the day, three weeks ago. You think I'm comfortable letting that person paint my house? Probably not, right? Because they're not following through. How are they supposed to do the work when they can't even follow through with the bid? 
So follow through is doing what you said you were going to do, but more importantly, when you said you were going to do this, okay? And you guys are not doing this right now. And I promise you, if you do this right now, this will absolutely change your leasing life. You're gonna build so much credibility with residents. There's really no way for anybody to know what the resident experience is gonna be like other than going online and reading reviews about the community, right? Which we'll talk about that probably next month uh, or, or sometime soon after we wanna make sure we're capturing positive reviews because that's my way as a potential resident of knowing what the resident experience is gonna be like there about the community, right? So reviews, and then my experience with you. So if I'm working with Anna, my experience with Anna is gonna be a barometer, an indicator for what my experience is gonna be like when I live at the community. And when you follow through, I want you to do what you said you were gonna do, but more importantly, I want you to do that exactly when you said you were going to do it, right? So if Anna, if I ask Anna, hey, what are the middle schools in the area? Right? And Anna goes, great question, let me figure that out. I'll, I'll have it to you by 3.15 this afternoon. Fair enough, right? I'm like, wow, Anna is organized. Man, Anna is on the ball, 3.15, right? That's incredible, she's actually giving me an exact time. And then if Anna can follow through with that and call me at 3.15 with the school district information, think about all the credibility that's there. Think about how much less likely I'm gonna complain about the price and everything else when I'm like, man, they are on it. They are organized. There's such a huge psychological uh, advantage to you doing what you said you were gonna do exactly when you said you were gonna do it. That's follow through, okay? The third type of follow up, does anyone wanna take a guess at what that is? You're scrambling, you're going into your portal right now and looking for the answer. The third type of follow up is follow back, okay? Follow back, and hopefully you're doing this, is when you keep track of all of the residents that told you, hey, I'm gonna go lease at Terrible Towers, right? Uh, Ripoff Manor, they've got a Tesla charging station. Turns out I never got my Tesla. I'm still waiting for it, never showed up. So I didn't really need that Tesla charging station, right? But I'm now I'm, 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 I'm nine months into my lease at Ripoff, Ripoff Rivers, right? Terrible Towers I thought would be great, um, because they had a dog park. It turns out that the dog park was actually like more of a, a dog uh, fighting facility. And my, my dog has been halfway eaten seven times. I can't stand living at Terrible Towers, right? I either need to sell my Shih Tzu and get a, 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 a pit bull that can handle herself in the dog park or I need to move, right? Follow back is we want to follow back with those people that told us no. Ideally, we wanna do that around the nine month mark. Why? Their current property management company ain't doing it unless that I'm training them, right? If we focus so much on how do I get new leads? How do I get the phone to ring? Yet we forget, holy cow, I've got about 111 people that I talked to nine months ago that I could make a call to right now, right? And you, my data shows that you'll capture between 15 and 30% of those people if you simply follow back with them. Don't need to pay for it. I know, you guys are like, money ain't coming out of my pocket. It kinda is though, isn't it? Because if we can save corporate money on marketing expenses, that's more money that they can give us, right? That's more opportunity. Maybe it's an opportunity for them to buy another property, for us to become a regional manager, right? Profitability is good. Having money is good. Wasting money on advertising is, not so great, right? We wanna make sure that we're maximizing those advertising dollars. A great way to do that is follow back, okay? So we got follow through, well, I'm sorry, follow up, follow through and follow back. Now I told you I was gonna give the primers for what to say in each of these scenarios. Grab your pen and grab your paper. I'm gonna walk you through the primer of what to say in each of these scenarios, okay? Follow up. Somebody unmute yourself and tell me what's the worst thing that you can say there's a couple of them. What are the give me some ideas of worst things you could say when you're following up with a resident or with a prospect? Okay, so they came, they looked at the apartment uh, nine days ago. You haven't heard from them. You're following up. You're going to get their voicemail. Of course, you're going to get their voicemail. What's the worst thing you could say on that voicemail? I'm calling just to see if you're still interested. Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm calling just to see if you're still interested because. 
I still got apartments and I want to keep my job. I just don't have anything better to do today, right? What are the exact words that we typically use when we're making a follow-up call? What's the words that come out of our mouth? Blech. They're terrible words to say. What's the exact words that we use when we say something like that? I'm, I'm calling to see if you're still interested. I'm just checking in. Boom. I'm just checking in. I'm just, we literally use the word follow up. I'm just following up. I just wanted to circle back. I hate that word just, right? And that's something that we say reflexively, which means we say it without thought. But that should be something, maybe write that down on your paper and cross that out. Anytime you're using the word just in front of something, you're, you're basically becoming weak, right? I'm just hoping that maybe if you weren't going to homecoming that maybe you'd just consider going with me. That's what I sounded like back in 1990. And that's why I never went to homecoming. I know, it's sad, right? Nobody ever went to homecoming with me because I was just checking in to see if you're not going with anybody because I really would like to go to the dance. I've been watching Vanilla Ice videos and working on my moves and I've got it down, right? Never happened. I had the whole Vanilla Ice video dance down. No, I'm not going to do it for you guys. But I was always just following up, just checking in, right? Just circling back to see if you wanted to go to the dance with me. Okay, so here's what I want you to do when you're following up, okay? There's a lot of really powerful stuff at Leasing University that I've taught you. A lot of these tools are universal. I want you to grab the universal tool out of your toolbox from closing, and I want you to use that for following up. So instead of saying, I'm just following up, I'm just checking in, I'm just circling back, just wanted to see if you're still interested, you're gonna say this. Does it make sense to blank? Whatever it is that you wanted them to do. Let's say you just talked to them on the phone. You've only talked to them on the phone and you want them to come in. Instead of saying, I'm just checking in to see if you'd like to schedule a time to come by the property, right? Hey Anna, Matt Easton over here at Meadows calling to see if it makes sense to get you into the community today. I have a few opening on tours. Call me on my mobile, right? Or call me here at the leasing office. Well, let's say Anna's been there and she looked at it and she told me she just needs to think about it. Hopefully, ideally, you've set a next step with them. But if you haven't, okay, we, we need to work on that on another coaching call. But instead of saying, I'm just checking in to see if you're still interested in the apartment, right? Hey, Anna, Matt Easton over here at Meadows calling to see if it makes sense to sign the lease agreement. Hey, Anna, Matt Easton at Meadows. Uh, 407 is still available. I'm calling to see if it makes sense for me to send over the paperwork so you can lock that down before somebody grabs it later on today. Give me a call here at the leasing office. So anytime you're following up, instead of saying, I'm just checking in, I'm just following up, I'm just circling back, just wanting to see if you're still interested, right? All week, I want you to be assertive. I want you to be powerful. I want you to be on point. I want you to be organized without being pushy or manipulative. And if you say, I'm calling to see if it makes sense. You can't, they can't say you're pushy or manipulative because you're literally asking them if they think it makes sense. It's impossible for them to think you're pushy. Now, if I call and say, Anna, you want to lease that apartment or what? It's going to be gone by four o'clock today. That is gross. That is disgusting. We should quit our job and go sell like something, hair extensions, I don't know, used cars, right? Whatever the people in the movies that are the terrible salespeople, that's the job we should do, right? But notice I could take all that pressure away. Hey, Anna, Matt Easton at Meadows, calling to see if it makes sense to get you in here to do an actual walkthrough on the unit. Give me a call, right? So when we're following up, the words that we're going to use are, does it make sense to blank, okay? Which brings us to number two. Follow through, doing what we said we were gonna do when we said we're gonna do it. This is a tremendous opportunity to build credibility in us, to build credibility in the community, to get that person to be like, wow, these guys are on the ball. And if it was me, I'm just saying, if it was me, I'm not saying lie, <laughs> but I am always looking for answers. Let's just put it this way. I'm always looking for questions where I'm not exactly 100% certain on the answer, right? 
this way I don't feel like I'm lying, but let's say I'm 99% certain I know what the middle schools are. I might want to hold that information back and say, Anna, great question. Let me just double check on the middle schools. There's three. I want to, I want to just make sure I've got the names right and the, and the districts right. Let me just map that out for you. Um, I'll have that to you. It's 11.15 now. I'll have that to you by 1.30 today. Fair enough, right? I'll have that to you by um, like 1.25 today. And I love numbers like that, 125. And I'll have that information over to you by like 125 today, fair enough? Because that gives me an opportunity to follow through with Anna. That gives me an opportunity to reconnect with Anna. That gives me an opportunity to show Anna that I'm the person she wants to work with in an apartment. And when I follow through, my verbal primer is this, as promised. Right, so boom, 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 boom. Most likely I'm gonna get Anna's voicemail, whether she answers or not, it's the same thing. Anna, as promised, I've got that information on the school districts for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and email it over to the email you left with me, but if you could give me a call here at the leasing office, I'd love to walk you through it in person. Right, Anna, as promised, I checked and we do have a three bedroom that's going to be available in the next uh, 45 days. Does it make sense to get you down here? We can walk through the model. Notice I just did two of them together. But when you're following through, the primer is always gonna be as promised. You guys don't think this is a big deal. This is a massive deal, right? There is a massive level of subconscious credibility established when you call some, like that's why I love to say, Anna, 125 today, I'll have that for you. And I literally set an alarm on my phone. Bing, bing, bing. You guys are like, I don't wanna do that. That sounds terrible, organizing my day like that. Yeah. And it also, you'll close leases like 10 times easier, right? When you're it, exactly 125, boop, boop, boop. Anna, as promised, I've got the information on the reserved spots. I do have one available. Give me a call here at the leasing office. As promised is your primer. That's the first thing out of your mouth when you are following through because you're following through on your promise, okay? Which leads us to our last one, following back following back, okay? Again, this one's one of the easiest ones for us to get passive. We don't wanna go passive, we wanna go massive, right? Hey, I'm just trying to rhyme, right? We wanna get massive amounts of lease. If we wanna get massive amounts of leases, it's a good idea not to be pat. Hey, Anna, um, you were in here a year ago, my boss told me I've gotta check in with you because that's part of my job and I have to put it on a TPS report. So I'm checking in with you. I'm at Meadows Apartments, give me a call. Blech. That sounds terrible, don't even make that call, right? Just don't even waste your time. But your primer with following back should be something like this. Hey Anna, Matt Easton at Meadows. You might not remember me, but I remember you. Something just came up this morning, had me thinking about you. Something just came up this morning, had me thinking about you. Curious to see how things were going. I know you it sounded like you had signed a lease with Terrible Towers. Whatever it is that you leave in your note from a year ago. Now, you, a lot of you are like, well, I don't have notes from a year ago. Start making notes right now. And if you don't have a note, you could just say, hey, something came up, had me thinking about you guys. Uh, I've got an idea that I wanted to get your opinion on. Can you call me here at the leasing office? There's one thing that everybody in this world wants to give. It's not their time, and it's not their money, and it's not their assistance, and it's not you a ride to the airport, right? These are all things that we don't want to give somebody. I don't want to give them a ride to the airport. That sounds terrible. But everybody, don't believe me, go check my social media, right? I, I made a video like this on TikTok saying, uh, leave a voicemail for people because everybody likes to give their opinion. Go find my TikTok, look in the comments. Somebody wrote a comment. They're like, this is the stupidest thing ever. There's no way anybody would ever call you back because they want to give you their opinion. And I just want to let you know that your video stinks. I couldn't see because it was a typed comment. They're like, your video stinks and this is the stupidest sales advice ever. And I, I just wrote back, okay, I get it, right? Because always agree with them. So you just took four minutes to type your opinion about a video that says people don't like to give their opinion. And the person literally went back in. I was, I was thinking they were gonna delete their comment. You know they're making this up. They're like, oh, ha ha, so my other comment was a joke 
and I wanted to see if you got the joke. No, you didn't. You just wanted to give your opinion, right? It's amazing when I leave that voicemail. Hey, Anna, it's Matt Easton here at Meadows. You were here about nine months ago. I believe you uh, rented an apartment uh, nearby. Something just came up this morning. I'd love to get your opinion on it. Give me a call here at the leasing office, right? And make sure you have something. You can have one thing that you're, maybe you guys, you guys know you just improved the pool, right? Or whatever you just did. Make sure you have something other than, I wanted to get your opinion on whether or not you wanted to lease with me, right? Have something that's collaborative, right? You know, a lot of our residents that have uh, come to us from other communities, what they found is with us being close to Tyson's Corner, it makes it a lot easier for them to get to work and, and avoid what's been going on with traffic has been a nightmare over the last year. Is that something that you're seeing where you're living right now? Seeing what? Uh, problems with traffic. Yeah, absolutely. I'm stressed out, right? I literally have to listen to like Tony Robbins and meditation music in the car. Mm, well, I've got my hands on the wheels because mm, I'm so stressed out. Man, yeah, that's we're, we're seeing that a lot of people, that's the main reason why they've come to us from those other communities is we're so close to everything here in the Metroplex. You know what, does it make sense for you to come by and take a second look at the community, right? There's a no-lose situation. Does it make sense for you to come by and, and, and take another look at the community? Have an idea, right? Just have an idea. Show them that you're thinking in terms of how you can improve their life, right? Hey, we just remodeled our pool and I know, you know, it's been nine months since you looked, since you looked at it here again, and, 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 and I'd love it to see if it makes sense for you to come by and, and see the upgrades that we've made at the community. There's nothing wrong with that. Nobody's going to be offended by you doing that. They're going to be like, wow, this person clearly loves their job. They're totally organized. If I could get half as excited about that community as them, this is probably going to be a better place for me to live. Their current place is not following back with them. They're just hoping they get the renewal. We'll talk about how to get renewals in a future thing. So those are your three types of follow-up. Follow up. Your primer is going to be, does it make sense to blank? Does it make sense to bring your friend to come look at it? I can't sign a lease unless Tina looks at it. Right, does it make sense to get you and Tina down here? Does it make sense to blank? Does it make sense to sign the lease agreement? Okay, follow through. As promised, bop, 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 bop. Tina, as promised, I have information on the reserved parking spaces. And follow back. Something came up, was thinking about you. You probably don't remember me, but I remember you. When people hear words like that, you probably don't remember me, but I remember you, they can't help but feel good, right? They're like, wow, I must be like a famous person. This person remembers me. And they want to lean into what you have to say next. And then let them know on that voicemail, hey, I've got an idea. I want to get your opinion on it, right? Follow up. Follow through, follow back. What questions do you guys have for me? The way people rent apartments has changed. Today's renter has access to more information. Today's renter has more choices. The apartment industry needs you. Studies have shown that moving is the most stressful life event. The old sales training, well, it just doesn't work today. I'd like to teach you how to take the stress out of leasing apartments in a way that's meaningful to you and your renters and get you seven times more leases. I'll show you how the perfect leasing process works. I'm gonna walk you through everything from answering the phone to closing the lease. I'm gonna show you how to determine your prospects' wants and their needs so that you can build value in your apartments. You will learn how to handle any objection or complaint. I'm gonna show you how to connect with your renter so it's easy for them to rent with you. I've taught the best property management companies and thousands of people just like you how to lease apartments. Property management is complicated. I'll simplify it for you. There's more competition than ever before. I'm gonna show you how to be number one. All of a sudden, your career, it's gonna make perfect sense. Even if you've never worked in sales or property management before. And for the advanced property manager, I'm gonna show you how to take things to the next level. Leasing University is a new, simple, step-by-step -step process that's effective. We're gonna help you become a rock star in property management. I'm Matt Easton, and this is Leasing University.